everyone. Wait a minute for everyone to fill in here. chat here. Hey Archer. Um, so I pushed back the homework uh, to be due on Monday because I don't think we'll get through all the stuff um, by today, but we should get it through by today and tomorrow, uh, uh, next next time. Um, and uh, yeah, Lily, which uh, word problems? Uh, word problems at 8.6. Let me take a look. Let me see here. Um, let me see. So, um, Six. Oh, um, so uh, Lily, for the word problems, uh, uh, you first set it up as a system, and then you can use the stuff with matrices, like the um, uh, the elimination method that, that we saw. So that's all that they need. Um, OK. I want to do uh, just a, um, hmm. yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, uh, matrices and uh, what they mean. And then we'll see some, uh, oh. Let me see here. Uh, share screen. And also, those of you that I asked to do cor corrections for the exam two, I posted the, all the notes from the, the previous classes. And I think the note, one of the notes, has like the solutions to the practice. So you can look over that the practice solutions and uh, the actual exam was very close to the practice. So um, when you do your corrections, um, uh, you can email me them uh, or just email me that you've uploaded your corrections um, and upload them to the, uh, to the actual exam site. I'll take a look. And then the corrections don't actually give you points, but they will give you, um, you know, a chance to do a, a retake. But I want to make sure that uh, you've done the corrections and you understand all the problems. And if there's still any problems that you're not sure about, um, I'm happy to meet in office hours. Uh, just email me and we can we can set that up. Um, okay, so notability. So. Um, uh, Yeah, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, uh, how matrices maybe. Hmm, let me think of the best way to approach this. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll discuss a little bit about um, uh, the geometry behind matrices and how to visualize matrices. So uh, um, this lesson would be um, geometry. 
geometry of uh, matrices and um, what they represent. In particular, we're going to do two by two matrices. And please stop me if there's any part of this lesson that you're confused with. Um, this is not in the book. Uh, we're kind of doing like a, a, a intermediate chapter between 8.6 and 8.7. Because in 8.7, what they do is they just throw a formula at you. And it's a formula that gives you an answer uh, that uses a, a, um, uh, something called the, the, the determinant to allow you to, once you have a matrix, you can plug this formula in and it's a little bit tedious to, to, to do all the, all the calculation, but it's a pretty straightforward formula um, and you get the answer right away. You don't have to do elimination. So they just throw that at you. Uh, but before doing that, I wanna show you guys kind of what matrices, how to interpret, another interpretation of matrices um, and how to think about them. So um, uh, before we talk about that, I wanna just introduce the idea of a vector. So a vector, does anyone know what a vector is from physics? You might have heard of it. Isn't it like a point kind of in a um, way? Heard of, heard of a vector before? Um, can you hear me? Who hasn't okay. heard of a vector? Uh, hit no if you haven't heard of vector. Nice, really, exactly. Um, that's right. It has uh, a vector is um, uh, something that has both a magnitude and a direction. So you can think of a vector as uh, um, as just like a, an arrow that points, you know, starts from the origin and points, uh, um, you know points to a certain point. So it's very similar to a coordinate. So, uh, and vectors are good for uh, describing. So you can use a vector to describe like how somebody walked. Um, oh, no, I, oh shoot, I, I, my, I can't hear you guys, sorry. Not again, testing. Can somebody say something? Hello. Oh yeah, I can hear you now. Might have my headphones. Uh, what, what did you guys say? Sorry about that. I totally didn't hear anything uh, earlier. Oh no, I just said that like a vector is like a point, but I think Lily got the point down. So. Yeah, it, it's a lot like a point. Um, uh, like if you want to tell somebody uh, uh, how to walk from from one point to another, you would tell them, "Hey, walk." Uh, um, let's say. Uh, along the vector, uh, so vector, we write it as a column, so we can write it as, it's similar to a coordinate, it's similar to a coordinate, but the difference is, um, but we can, we can add them, and uh, dilate them or scale them. Okay, so, um, so uh, a vector, instead of writing uh, a point here, this is the point, uh, let's say two, sorry, let's say three comma two. To, to make it clear that it's a vector, you'll write uh, we write this little notation, we write little v with a little arrow on top. This is a kind of a older common notation. Um, and we write this for the, uh, the first coordinate is on the top and we write it as a column. So this is a vector that points in direction, uh, move over three and walk up two. So I would read this as uh, move 
move to the right, move, move to right, uh, three units, and then up, up two units. That's how I would interpret this one. And if W is another vector, so if you go walk by V and then you walk by uh, W, let's say W is another vector, let's say negative uh, two, five, this means um, walk to the left by two and then go five steps up. So if you do V plus W, so I'll draw here, here's W. A W is walk to the left two and walk up five. So this is this would be W. So can anyone tell me how we should how we could think about B plus W? This is B. This is W. What could we do if we did V plus W? What, what would that come out to? If you walk along the arrow V and then walk along the, and then from where you are at, F, at V, you will walk along the arrow W. Where would you end up? Nice. I thought, yes, Lily says uh, one, you'd walk, end up at one seven. You just add the, the pairwise, the matching coordinates. So uh, the result, when you add two vectors, you just add up their coordinates. So this is gonna be um, one, seven. Okay. Because I'm adding the two and the five and the negative three, the three and the negative two. And what that really represents is something uh, to visualize it better. It's actually nice to draw. I kind of think of vectors as, um, I kind of think of vectors as like a, a little bit like pin the tail on a donkey, that game um, where you, know, you, you, you're, you are allowed to just like, when you're adding vectors or thinking of them, you, you don't have to have them always be at the origin. They just have to keep their direction and magnitude like their length and the way that they're pointing the same, but you can move them around and combine them. Um, and so for example, uh, what, what's really happening here when we add them together is we're saying first walk along V and then from there walk along W. And that uh, combining those steps would get you to the result V plus W. So I think that's a nice way to think about vectors is just like as if you're telling somebody which way to walk. And if you want to tell them uh, combine multiple steps, that's like adding vectors. And so the result here would be V plus W. Um, and it's nice when you add two vectors, you actually, and you see the, the, the original vectors here, I'll, I'll draw, draw, redraw it here. You get this nice parallelogram shape, and the sum of the two vectors is going to be kind of the diagonal of this parallelogram. Okay, any questions on um, kind of what a vector represents and how we can add them? Uh, does anyone have any examples of vectors in real life? and where you could see them and what they could be used for and how what they could represent. And this um, is kind of an open-ended question. Maybe yeah. like a street? A, a street? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like uh, uh, if you're in a city, right, and you have to walk a certain number, maybe like to get from one spot to another, you can, you can give the direction. Um, I like that example. Anything else that the vectors might be, you might have seen with vectors?
Yes. Oh, uh, uh, nice. So uh, Gabriel asked, are, are vectors used to find friction? Um, and friction is kind of the uh, uh, something you learn about in physics that measures how much something pushes against you uh, when you're sliding between two, the, the, there's something sliding between two surfaces. Um, and so, yeah, so uh, um, uh, if you have ever worked with uh, forces or things kind of pushing on each other, you can represent forces by using vectors. So like uh, if you're pushing um, uh, a block, uh, there might be the force of friction. So if you're, if you're pushing the block and let's say you're pushing it by um, going this way, you're pushing it with uh, some force. Usually the units of force are like called something called Newtons. So this, you could push it with five Newtons this way and then maybe the force of gravity uh, is pushing the block down on the ground and creating a, uh, a friction force that's gonna be pushing it um, maybe three Newtons that way. And so all together, combining the five Newtons to the right and three Newtons to the left, um, you get two Newtons. So that's a good example. Um, have any of you guys ever seen uh, uh, visualizations of hurricanes? Um, any thoughts on how they might use vectors in weather and weather data? Yeah, okay, okay, so our, our specific point, they, they do show kind of the, the tra trajectory of the uh, hurricane. Um, that's not what I was thinking of, but that, that is true. They show different vectors like, okay, tomorrow it's gonna be there, and after tomorrow it's gonna go in this path. Um, uh, but yeah, look, look, they, they show um, wind speed. So if you have, a, um, a, if you measure the wind speed at every point in a hurricane, what you end up with is you get this like rotating vector, we call it a vector field. Um, you know, you get these, these little patterns because the wind is going kind of like a, in a circle and it's stronger, it's like a longer, uh, uh, you get something like this maybe. The, the arrows will be longer, closer to the center or maybe they die out somewhere. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what the uh, exact vector field. So vectors are really good for describing like how strong something is at a certain point and which direction it's pushing in. Um, so this is something called a vector field, which assigns a vector to every point in, in a certain space. Um, if you've ever heard, ever seen stuff with magnets and iron, um, that is another nice visualization of vector fields. Um, but uh, yeah, these are, these are the basic things for vectors. They could give you, they can describe wind, like how fast the wind is moving at a certain point, like where, where you need to know, to tell me how the wind is moving, you need to tell me how strong it's moving and which direction it's moving in. Um, awesome. Okay, so uh, that's vectors. But in general, we don't need to really worry, uh, we're, we're, we're doing math here, so we don't really need to worry about all these applications. Um, I just think of vectors as arrows that point in certain directions. And the thing you can do with these arrows is you can add them together. They just tell you like a walker goes three to the right, two up, and then they go negative two, two to the left and five up. Overall, they're gonna go one unit up and seven, uh, uh, sorry, one unit to the right and seven up. Um, that's like V plus W. Um, uh, and the other thing you can do with them is, uh, um, the other thing you can do is scale them. So if you want to do, uh, three copies of V, what do you guys think three copies of V is? So three times V, what would that be equal to? And V is the same vector here. Nice. You just multiply everything by three. So this would be just nine six, and that just really represents. Okay, call you know call somebody up, tell them okay, walk three blocks to the right, two blocks up, 
then do it again three times. If they do it again three times, they will be, you know, over here after one time and over here after two times. So this would be 3B. Okay, very simple and nice idea. Um, very similar to coordinates that you learn XY coordinates, um, except the only difference is that you have a, a slightly more structure and we generally write them as a column. Um, uh, sometimes you can write them as a, uh, as a line, but they'll write it uh, like, uh, they'll write something like this. The, 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 I've seen this notation as well. But I, I like to use column because column is very nice for matrices. Okay, so uh, um, uh, what we're gonna see is uh, um, how this relates to um, uh, matrix multiplication. So, um, uh, and, and this, well, yesterday I actually forgot to mention something. So I, I, I told you that uh, matrices are useful for um, uh, you know, Google, uh, Tesla self-driving stuff and, and Qualcomm. Um, and those are really kind of ad advanced applications. Uh, but one really neat application of matrices is um, for uh, 3D graphics and video games. And it's actually a really simple idea that uh, you guys will be able to um, uh, appreciate or you, you'll be able to answer the question right away um, and you'll see how, how, how matrices could help a computer answer a certain question. And it's just about visualizing something. So, um, and, and, and yeah, so let's see here. Uh, so let's start with the XY plane. So I'm gonna just draw a regular XY plane. So here's X. Here's Y, and I'm going to draw a few grid lines. One, two, three, and you know, let me today. I'm going to maybe take. Hmm, let me see here. Let me let me just remove the paper background for now, um, because. One, two, oops, three, four, okay. That didn't work, sorry. One more, I'm just gonna draw these really quick here. Good, one, two, three. Okay, last one. All right, so we have our regular XY grid here. Um, and uh, imagine that you are uh, on, uh, have you guys ever done like um, uh, the 3D view on uh, Google Maps? like where you can use the two fingers to sort of um, uh, uh, go into it as if it's 3D and like kind of zoom over it. So when you do that, um, do you agree that maybe you could like, let's say there's, this is, this is the bird's eye view. This is the bird's eye and we call this the standard view. Now, uh, imagine if uh, we uh, try to do a visualization where we um, uh, where we uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, used our two fingers. This is on our iPhone, and we use the two fingers. I can't do it here, but if I went to Google Maps, let me see here. Maybe I have Google Maps on here. Uh, do I have Google Maps on here? 
Uh, well, okay, yeah, I think you guys get the idea, but we're, unfortunately, I don't think I have a 3D thing here. No, I don't have it, okay. Um, so, but if you were to use Google Maps, you could, you know, uh, um, you could rotate it and, and use two fingers so that you're visualizing it in 3D. Um, also, when you play video games and you control the character, you do this a lot. So you can go from a bird's eye view of the, like a race car or something, um, and you can tilt the axes so that you're looking at it from a different perspective. You can change your perspective. Um, and so let me kind of draw this. So this will become Y. Maybe this would become, uh, this would become X. And now our grid lines look like, like that. Let me extend this a little bit. I'm gonna ask you guys a really easy question in a second. And you guys will get it right away. And then I'll ask you a follow-up question that's more philosophical. Okay, I didn't do the best job with that. That one, I'm gonna do that. I'll extend that one a little bit. Okay. Right here. Sorry guys, but uh, uh, I promise this will be worth the idea. Um, okay, so um, does everyone believe that um, the two pictures are both visualizations of the XY plane? Hit yes if you believe that the thing on the left is really the same object as the thing on the right. Like if you're using it from Google Maps. Nice, okay, a lot of, everyone believes that. Okay, so now I'm gonna ask you guys, um, let's say I have a point on the left. That's the point, uh, this one, I've been sticking with three comma two. So it's right over here. Which point does it represent uh, on the left? Can anyone, anyone wanna um, annotate on here? Do you guys agree that this red point represents, or maybe I'll, I'll just draw it in here. Does everyone see that this red point is the same, given my axis and everything are the same in spacing, represents that red point over there? Those are uh, conceptually to us exactly the same point. And then also, if I was to draw another point over here, let's say, let's say negative one, negative two, like right over here, do you guys agree that that would be a point right down here? Is that okay? Hit yes if you're comfortable with why the blue point goes there and why the red point goes there. And hit no if you're if you're not comfortable with, with those picture with that picture. So nobody has any questions about this, right? This is this is just kind of like a, a we're really good as humans. We're really good at visualizing things like this. If you rotate some grid and now you're looking at it from a different perspective, this is like 
kind of like you're off to the side and you're uh, slightly above the plane and you're looking at it like from the sky, you're not directly above the origin. Um, like you're not, you're, def you're not in outer space looking at everything. You're kind of like flying over it a little bit and looking on, on, off to the side. Um, you might see this perspective. Um, so we're really good at immediately identifying points that are the same. So let me, th and this is where it gets weird. How do you guys think, and, and uh, I'm, I wanna hear your ideas. How does a computer know that the blue point is the same as the red point? Is it, is it easy for a computer to tell that, hey, those, the blue points should be the same and the red points should be the same? Like if I was to overlay them, you know, if I was to overlay, let me just create a little copy here. Copy, and let me just paste it. So if I was to overlay them, this looks pretty trippy. Where's the X? Okay, it's right there. So if I if I put the origins together, it looks like the blue points and the red points are you know not really close to each other. So how how could we tell the computer? Um, how could we express this to to computer to the computer? For us, it's it's immediate, right? We know right away. But imagine, and, and, and when you're doing this on Google Maps and you use your fingers to kind of, uh, I think you use two fingers and you kind of slide it up and, uh, and down, um, it'll tilt the perspective. Um, how does a computer kind of uh, uh, rearrange the points so that to you it's immediately obvious like what's corresponding to what? But for the computer, you have to realize that the, the computer is only seeing things in two dimensions and doesn't know anything about the third dimension, right? Everything it shows you is expressed in two dimensions. So how does it know where to place the blue point and where to place the red point so that you can visualize it uh, still as, as um, uh, uh, the blue point and red point instantaneously? So the answer, uh, nice. Um, uh, some students said uh, correctly that the, the, the computer couldn't really tell by itself. Um, but it has some programming. There's some sort of algorithm that does it. Um, and the answer is it's just based on a matrix. So um, so what we do to express uh, to express a change in perspective, this is this is what we call a change in perspective, or in math they'll call it a change of basis, but we call this a change. It's like a change in perspective. And I'll post a series of videos um, uh, that if you're interested in this idea, which is a really powerful and neat idea, um, you, you could watch this uh, videos and um, I can also give you some extra reading if you, if you like kind of this idea. Um, but uh, we're just gonna just scratch the surface of it. So if you wanna express a change in perspective, it turns out that what you can do is uh, uh, you can set up a matrix. So let's say we have a, a matrix like this. So I'm gonna draw the purple, because what's, what's really important is whenever I have a, a vector, like a, a, like a red dot or a blue dot, um, what I need to know is how many units to the right did I travel and how many units up do I go? So instead, uh, I, tell, I, t I, I program into the computer a matrix that tells me, okay, well, the stepping to the right used to be going once, adding one unit to the right, and stepping up used to be adding one unit up. But now, stepping to the right is going to be moving along one purple arrow, and stepping up is no longer moving directly up. But because I'm using, I'm, you know, I still have to tell the computer because the computer is two dimensional. Of course, I'm moving up along the y axis. But do you guys see that that green arrow on the, on the computer screen, do you guys see that the green arrow is not actually going up the computer screen? It's going up and a little bit to the right. Um, it, yeah, so that's, so, so Archer asked a good question. Is it, is it because there's a Z axis here? Um, we, don't, we don't actually need to think about the, our brains. It's very interesting. 
uh, psychologically, right, our brains see this as rotating something, like seeing it from a different perspective in three dimensions. But you don't actually technically need that. The computer doesn't need to think of the three dimensions to, to express what's happening here. The computer just uses um, a, different, uh, a different pair of uh, what we call basis vectors. So, <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, and, and this will this will show you kind of what matrix multiplication is, and it will give you another interpretation of solving a two by two system. Okay, so, uh, so, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, let. So, what do you guys think? The purple arrow. If if I overlay the original grid on top of the purple arrow, what do you think the vector of the purple arrow would represent? Just give me like a, like if I, if I were to move the purple arrow, just directly transplant it to the original XY plane, what would its coordinate be? What do you guys think? So if I just take, so if I take this vector right here, right, this one, and I move it just to, just so that it has the same, uh, it looks like it's still going horizontal to me. And it looks like it's about the same length. Oh, okay, good. Uh, uh, the green one, yeah, the green one would be something a little bit different. The green one would maybe be like, if I move the green one, it looks like maybe it's going to go like that, you know, approximately. But the purple one, the purple one I would represent to the computer. So the computer only sees, the computer doesn't see any change of like perspective. The computer just sees always left, right, up, down. The computer only sees one thing. But I can tell the computer, hey, the purple arrow, which we call, uh, uh, let's say the purple one is V. And the green one is W. So I can say to the computer, V equals uh, one zero. And then I can also tell the computer, the green one, W equals, um, Let's say uh, it looked like W was roughly like over here. I'm just gonna kind of draw it here. W is right here and V is right here. Would you guys agree that's a pretty good, like uh, looks kind of reasonable. Um, so W to me looks like it's about one half, one half, whoops. One half and one. Okay, this is a good, really good point. Um, is everyone okay with how I got V and how I got W? I'm expressing V and W uh, using the, the original coordinate system. And we're about to do the next step, which is just gonna uh, give you a lot of insight into what matrix multiplication or one interpretation of matrix multiplication. <laughs> uh, Gabby, we're, we're about to do that in one second. But so far, uh, is everything okay? <clears throat> so please hit yes if you feel like everything I wrote so far seems pretty obvious and makes sense, like pictures, yes, okay. It's interesting though, right? Do you guys agree it's kind of interesting? How does a computer know where to draw the red dot? Like, if I told you move three steps to the right and two up on the grid, you'd instantly know how to do that. But how do we tell the computer how to do that? So our goal now is how to tell the computer the true coordinates of the red dot. So here's our question is how does the computer know How does the computer know
where to draw the new red dot. The computer only can, you know, how does it know to, to move it over like wherever, like a little bit over to the right and, and up? So, well, if we, the idea here is uh, how can we express to, how do we tell somebody how to walk to the red dot? How many copies of V do they need? And how many copies of W do they need? And you can think of V now, don't think of it as, as, as like a, some complicated thing. You can think of V as just going to the right and W as going to the, going up and down. Nice. So Archer says, uh, we need to get to the red dot, we need three V. And how many Ws? So we want to go three steps to the right. In our in our in our change perspective, to get to the red dot, we go three steps to the right. And then how many Ws do we need? Can you how did you, how did you get that? Not quite. So how would you walk there? You would walk. One way to do it is one, you, you go this way, three steps here. And then from here, how do you get to the red dot? You go three three steps to the right. Not you don't want to do a half step here. You go up two. Nice, nice country. Yes. You go up two W. So you go three to the right and up two W. So I'm going to write it here. We do 3v plus 2w. And let's just write out what that is. This would be 3 times v is nice. That's just going to be 3, 0 plus 2w. W is going to be 1 half 1. So two of them would be uh, 2, 4. And then adding them together, you find out in the old system where you belong, where the red dot was, was moved to. The red dot was moved to 5, 4. So 5, 4 is if you kind of change your perspective, the computer will now draw the red dot. If you change your perspective by moving the original uh, axes, the original uh, standard, we call this the standard basis. So if you move these guys, the original x, y vectors, the ones that point one step to the right, one step up. If you transform them so that your uh, overall plane is shifted, so that the x vector maybe still stays as the x vector, but the, the y perspective has changed a little bit, um, you can describe what happens to any point by saying, OK, well, we want to move some amount on the v and some amount on the w. And if we know what, how v and w change, we know where the resulting point would move to. So the computer would draw the red dot at 5, 4 in, its, in the original bird's eye coordinate system. And that tricks our brain into thinking, oh yeah, that's, that should be, uh, that red dot represents 3, 2. Okay. Uh, any, any questions? Does this make sense so far, what, what we did? It's a little bit abstract. Um, anyone have any questions? So, 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 yes, that's that's fair. Uh, now, let me show you how this connects to matrices. So, what to 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 kind of um, to to encapsulate or to repeat this entire computation because it's kind of anno annoying to do this like. If you wanted to do it for um, uh, for every point on the uh, on the grid, like if you wanted to do it for every single point that you can think of on this grid and see where the new points would map to, um, you know, we want a kind of a systematic way of doing it. 
And this is where matrix multiplication comes in. So to, if you uh, notice how matrix multiplication works, what we can do is we make a matrix where the first column represents a V and the second column represents W. And uh, V is gonna be, we put one zero and the next one we put uh, one half. I'm just gonna write it, yeah, I'll write it in green here, but well, you know, it's one half. So whenever I see a two by two matrix, I immediately think of the parallelogram that I get from the first column um, uh, and then the second column. And I think, oh, that's somehow gonna transform. I'm thinking of these guys, V and W, as my new sort of main directions. This is one way to interpret matrix multiplication. And then I want you guys to do this as an exercise. What happens when you take a vector and you, sorry, when you take a matrix, a two by two matrix with, so this, this has two trucks and you multiply it, you apply this matrix or you multiply it by a vector. And now we're gonna multiply it by the vector three, two. So please try this out and tell me what you get and tell me what you observe. And let me know when you're done. Uh, did I make a mistake here? Let me see. Oh, my bad. Wait. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on. I'm so sorry, guys. What did I do here? I made a mistake in the first one. Nice. Um, uh, two times W is not two four. That's going to be plus um, uh, one. That's one two. What am I doing? And so this would be. This should be. Uh, or two. Sorry about that. Nice, uh, uh, Lily, Olivia, very good. Uh, uh, Anae, exactly, that's right. It would be um, column V times three and column W, uh, 1.52. Hmm. So let, let, let's do it together. Um, so if you take uh, this part, this truck, and you park it into the first spot, you get a number. You get one times three plus one half times two, so because there's one and one and a half, one and a half there. So that gives you four. And then um, uh, when you do zero one, you get two because you're taking uh, you're parking zero one into this spot. So you get zero and one. That just gives you uh, two. So you get four two. 
So what you observe when you do the trucks, um, uh, uh, nice, excellent. So what you observe about matrix multiplication, when it's a two by two matrix multiplied by a vector, what it really tells you is, and if you kind of just follow the truck into the parking spot method, um, you see that every tr the first part of every truck, the first column rather, will always hit will always be related to the first coordinate of the vector. So what it tells you is essentially the result is gonna be a new vector that's gonna be three copies of the first column and then two copies of the second column. And then just add them together and, and you get four, and then you get uh, your combined vector. Um, so let me, uh, I'm going to just do, uh, and I'm going to do this with um, uh, with letters, so you can kind of see this the pattern. V1, V2, W1, W2, and let's say we're going to multiply this into three, the vector, we multiply this matrix times the vector 3, 2. Ah, um, uh, Gabby, so be careful. We, we're not doing quite yet the, the thing in the uh, homework. That's the determinant. We haven't done that yet. This is just, this is not in the homework. This is just a matrix multiplication. So it's before you learn what the, you know, the determinant should technically come after that because it's a little bit uh, more advanced. But we'll see that uh, in a little bit. Um, so if you just kind of follow what this does, first, the first truck is V1, W1 into 3, 2. So I'm going to do 3v1 plus 2w1. That's the first number. The second number would be 3v2 plus 2w2. So that's what matrix multiplication does in this example. But you can interpret it in a different perspective if you say, oh, hey, wait a second. This looks like a combination of two different vectors. This looks like three V1, V2, which is the first column, plus two W1, W2. And little, little V without the arrow is just like the coordinate of V. Uh, and hey, did that, did that make, uh, did that, did, that, did that clear up how I got 4, 2? Oh, no, okay. So um, uh, when you, if you plug in, the idea is like, uh, were you okay with how we got 4, 2 um, once I fixed it up? Are you okay with how I got 4, 2 over here? So is this, what this is saying is it's the, the pattern of matrix multiplication creates the same exact effect because you do three times the first column plus two times the second column. So if you just do it, you do uh, this truck into this spot, you get three times one, that's three, plus one half times two. So that's gonna be three plus one, three plus one which is gonna be four. So that's the first, that's this, this part. So this is four. And then zero one into three, two, you get zero, zero times three, and then one, one, one times two, so that's just going to be 0 plus 2. That will be 4, 2. So all I'm showing here is that this idea of like, and it's a really simple idea, right? Everyone, I think, got that, OK, to express where the red dot is in terms of the old coordinates, you need to go three steps to the right on V and go two steps up on W. To express that, you can put V and W into a matrix as columns and then uh, multiply it by a vector where the first is how the first part of the vector is three, which tells you how many Vs you want, and the second part, the bottom part of the vector is two, which tells you how many Ws you want. And uh, what if we wanted to instead describe uh, what happens to the blue point? What could we plug in if we want to figure out where the blue point got mapped to? What could we? Plug into to, instead of the instead of three two, what we now plug into the blue point. What do you guys think? So if I want to draw the blue point, um, 
and kind of imagine, you know, this is all these these this picture, right, is happening on the same screen as the same your same phone screen. When you everything is getting transformed, so the blue point is is being moved somewhere. Um, what should I plug in to get the new coordinates of the blue point? Originally, it was uh, uh, one to the left and two down. So, how do I find the coordinates of the new point? Well. Any ideas what I can do to get the new coordinates of this of this point? If I were to overlay it on my original screen. Nice. It's going to be excellent. Excellent. It's minus 1v and minus 2w. So instead of kind of doing equivalent to doing this sort of calculation, we could just plug in the original coordinates, minus 1, minus 2 and multiply it times our matrix. Um, you know, we can multiply this times one, zero, one half, one times minus one, minus two. This would be the new position of the blue point. And if I do this uh, uh, carefully here, one half, one, one half, and to negative one, negative two, that truck gets you to a negative two, I believe. Yes, I like that. And then this last one would be negative two. So this would be the new new position of the blue point. Uh, in the in the true coordinate system, or in the standard in the standard coordinate, in the standard computer coordinates. Okay. How do you guys feel about this idea that the matrix that you can draw represents a, a change in perspective of your grid, and the the vector that you want to you can multiply by um, represents uh, kind of moving along like represents the old point, but tells you where it gets where where it gets like how the computer would actually draw. I know this, this is a little bit, uh, uh, it's a little bit confusing for sure, but uh, um, do you feel like you have, on a scale of one to 10, uh, you guys can message me where 10 is like, okay, this makes absolute sense. One, I have no idea what's going on. Um, how do you feel about this idea? And, and is it interesting? Do you find it interesting? <laughs> okay, we've got a few ones, a few people kind of in the middle. A few people below below five, okay. All right. So um, uh, I want to show you how this relates to solving a system of equations. And um, remember, we, when we worked with two by two systems, uh, just to uh, do a quick like flash uh, flashback or uh, quick review. What's the G, what did we say was, the, what did a two by two system represent? Can anyone tell me really quickly, just uh, either just hit the space bar, just uh, throw it in chat. What does a two, solving a two by two system represent? What's the picture associated to a two by two system? So two equations, two unknowns. Yeah, exactly. Uh, something to do with lines, right? Remember the two equations and two unknowns, we have the two lines, the two equations represented two lines, and they represented where the two lines uh, crossed. They give you a point. That was the solution. I'm about to show you another way to think of a two by two system. Um, and you might say, well, I already understand that old way. Why do I need to think of it in a different way? Um, and this goes back to kind of the philosophy of math that's really important is like the more the 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 more ways that you can see something uh, and and understand kind of from different perspectives um, the deeper your understanding of that of that idea becomes 
And I think this is really fascinating because when I first uh, did two by two systems, I learned it the same way that you guys did. Um, you know, say, oh, we're two lines, do elimination substitution. Um, but you get a, you, you're about to see another perspective, which is really cool. Um, and uh, and uh, um, uh, has a lot of uh, nice applications uh, uh, in interpretation. So, uh, so first, uh, let me show you how a two by two system uh, actually relates to um, uh, uh, matrices. So imagine this equation, x plus y over two equals to um, equals to uh, five. And um, um, uh, and y, so this is zero x, I'm just going to write zero x plus y is equal to um, plus one is equal to uh, No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. This should do. It's four two. <clears throat> um. So. Uh, this is a pretty simple system because, especially, it's already you can just plug in y equals two and you can solve for x right away. This is a really straightforward system. Um, but let's rewrite it as a, as a, I'll show you how we can rewrite this as a matrix. Um, and previously I told you, we just jumped into augmented matrices. Um, and if you remember, uh, I told you that you can write it as one, one half, four, and zero, one, and two. And I just said, okay, we can do elimination with this system. Um, but in reality, what's happening, what this kind of covers up is the X and Y. And there's a nice way to write this that ties in to the picture that we just drew. So um, uh, one way to rewrite this is like this. So this is really saying, find an XY, a, a vector XY, So that when you um, apply the matrix one, one half, zero, one to x, y, you get a new vector for two. Do you guys see how the trucks, when you take the truck and you park it into the spot, do you guys see that you get this equation? It, yes, if you see that matrix multiplication is a useful way to write a system. Or is 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 a way is like a similar to kind of putting the coordinates, the coefficients of the x's uh, and the y, and it's like the x y could be the parking spot. And then the zero one here, that's like right here. When you plug it in, you just get you can just get that. And now let's think about what this represents. <clears throat> this is saying okay. Uh, this is asking kind of to go in, in reverse. It's saying, uh, look at my, uh, uh, look at my, um, uh, look at my original position, original, look at my original, uh, grid, the computer grid and plot the point. What is it? Plot the point four comma two. Or let me let's go here. So this is our our uh, change in perspective, but on the computer, look at the point four two. So where is that? Four two is going to be over here. This is four two. What the um, what the uh, system is actually asking you to find is saying how many v's and w's do you need to reach this point? And then you'd say, oh yeah. If it, based on this picture, I would need three V's and two W's. 
let me give you guys another example here. If I had uh, the system, so let me copy and paste these pictures. Um, so, so let me give you another uh, system here. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to give you another interpretation of this. Well, okay, I'll keep that. I'll keep that for now. So we saw earlier that this would imply just from visualizing, this would imply that x, y equals 3, 2. So I'll give you another uh, uh, example. Um, so uh, let's say our grid is, um, so anytime you draw a two by two matrix, you can immediately think of a grid. So let's say I have um, uh, one, three, and minus one, no, minus two, um, two. And I wanna say here, uh, x, y equals, um, uh, let's say, zero um, zero eight so one way to interpret what this is asking is first draw the grid that corresponds to uh, v and w and moving along copies of v and w so we have our original x y grid right that's in the background, but I'm gonna draw an overlay of the VW grid, the, the, the grid that you make by taking different com combinations of Vs and Ws. And do you guys see that you're gonna get a, 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 a grid of parallelograms? So V is one step to the right and three up. So maybe this would be V. So V would be like right here. Um, and W, let me actually do it here. This one I'll do, uh, I'll go back to the paper. Let's do a grid here and let's do that. So I'm gonna, uh, let's erase it here. So this is our x coordinate, this is our origin, and this is our y coordinate, our y axis. V is one step to the right and three up. So this is V. I'm going to draw it in green. Let me kind of, oh yeah, I'll, I'll draw it in bold. One step to the right and three up. That's pretty good. Does that go through? No, no, no. That's perfect. Okay, so that's V. And uh, V looks like this. So V would point in that way. That's one comma three. Uh, and W is negative two, negative two. So W is over here. So I'm gonna draw a purple line that extends in the direction of W. And it keeps going. 
but but W is like right here. This is W. So this is W, and this one is V. Okay. Um, so what you should think of what's happening here is you somehow did Google Maps, and now your x-axis is the green line, and your y-axis is the purple line. And you could, what you can keep doing is you can make a grid of acting, you can do like 1v plus 1w, that would be what? Um, uh, if you make a little parallelogram here, that would give you a bunch of points. I'll make them, uh, I'll make this one here. So one, if you go up, one over three up, you're gonna be right here. Uh, if you go one over three up, you'll be right here. If you go one over three up, you'll be right there. So. If you go like that, I'll just kind of draw this like uh, as best as I can. And then, um, and then uh, if you go another one, three, so you go from here. To there, three, like that. We keep going. So you can see that VW will make a new grid and kind of like a new XY plane. And uh, we're going to do negative two, two. It's going to draw from here, going like that. Oops. Okay, so that's kind of pretty close. And then um, move along one step here, and then okay. So do you guys see that there's a new grid? on top of the old grid. Uh, please hit yes if you see the new grid on top of the old grid. Excellent. So do you agree that the new grid, the only information I needed for the new grid to understand what it looks like is the, the two by two matrix. That's what tells me what the new grid looks like. This is my, this is kind of like, instead of my x-axis, this is my v-axis. You have to tilt your head a little bit to see it. And this is my w-axis. Now you might say, you know, Dan, uh, before it made sense, you're you tilting things a, a different perspective. But if you realize this is also just, uh, you can imagine drawing the x-y plane, like maybe the, the satellite moved and tilted a certain angle and the, the you know, the z-axis or the, the position of the satellite changed a little bit. So now your map, it's still the same kind of territory where your map shifted. Okay, so now what this is what this what this equation is really asking, or one way to interpret the system is how many V's and W's do you need to get to the point in the old system? This is the old system. So this is in the old system. In the old, we call it the standard system, the standard XY system. So who can say, how many XYs do you need to get to the point uh, zero comma eight? Where is that? That's right here. Sorry, sorry, how many Vs and Ws do you need? Can anyone tell me how many Vs and Ws do you need to get to the red dot? Can anyone see that? To get from the origin to the red dot, how many Vs and how many Ws do I need? The red dot is zero eight. Uh, Lily, you said two, two. So let's walk through that. Hang on, hang on. So uh, uh, Hannah says two Vs and three Ws. 
Well, let's 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 do it together. Two V's. Do you guys agree? So this is one V right here. Two V's would be one step up right here. So that's two V's. Now, how many W's do I need from here to get to the red dot? I just need one W. That moves me right over there. So I'm just saying if I go along the grid, on the green purple grid, if I do two green steps to, to the right, to the, in the same direction as V, and one step in the direction of W, then I'll get to 0, 8 on my old uh, point. And in, sure enough, the solution is, so uh, if you write what we, we see from the picture right away, 2V plus 3W, uh, sorry, not plus 3W, plus 1W plus 1W equals um, the point 0, 8. And in particular, if you plug in x equals 2 and y equals 1 into that equation, uh, you get, um, you'll get the solution. Uh, here, let me ask you guys one more. Um, so this is, tr try to do, use this picture. You can stare at this picture a little bit. Can you solve this system by using this picture, the same matrix, so 1, negative 2, 3, 2, uh, x, y. So the columns tell us, tell us our new overlaid grid. And the point that I want to get to is going to be, um, I'm just looking at it here, it's going to be, um, let me see. The point that I want to get to is, um, negative six, one, which if we um, draw on the blue, on, on, on the graph, it's going to be over here, negative, oh, my bad, not negative six, negative five, one. So that's going to be right over here. Okay, who can tell me how many, uh, how many V's and W's I need to get to X and to get to five, negative five one? How many green and purple arrows do you need? just from looking at this picture. Hmm. If so, by the way, tilt your head. One thing you can do is uh, tilt your head and look at the new grid. Maybe I shouldn't have done different colors. Maybe I should have done everything in purple. I think maybe the green and purple makes it a little bit confusing. Um, yeah, tilt, tilt your head and look at the new grid. No, no, no. Here's the grid. And we have a, a you know, a, a, a big, this is W and the other one is, is, is uh, how many V's and W's do we need? And the origin is still at the origin but our perspective is you have to tilt your head a little bit to the left. So the W axis is kind of like the Y axis. 
and the V axis is like the X axis. Can anyone see how many V's and W's you need to get to the blue dot? Uh, from, from, from the origin, not one of each. The origin is at the yellow. How do you walk from the yellow dot to the blue dot? Nice and exactly. You go up two, two W, you go two purple arrows, and you go backwards with one green arrow. So what does that tell us about our, the answer to our system? The answer to our system is, so to get to, the blue, to get to the blue dot, which is on the old grid, it's negative five, one. Um, we just have to walk, uh, um, uh, we know that uh, from just from the picture visualizing, we know that uh, um, to get to the blue dot, we would use negative one V plus two W. That's what the blue dot would equal. So that tells us that in our system, we want X equal to negative one and we want Y to be equal to two. Because remember x y in in the in the in the system of equations, they can they represent in this case how many of the first column you need and how many of the second column you need to get, and this is why I called it the target. We want to get to the target. So how many of this thing do you need and how many of this steps do you need to get to your target? Okay, and if you actually plug it in, you'll see that it works out. When you plug in x equals negative one and y equals two into this matrix or into the, into the original system, you'll see the solution. So uh, there's something to chew on here. It's, it's, uh, how do you feel about this idea? Do you guys see that this is a different way, completely different way of seeing um, two equations, two unknowns? Um, Cool. And it's just something to think about. Um, it's a different perspective on it. Before we looked at, we, before we thought about equations of two equations, two unknowns, where do the lines cross? Now uh, with matrices, you see that a matrix represents a change in perspective or some sort of um, new grid. I, I like to think of a matrix as, uh, a, we'll, we'll see next time, it's, it's, you can think of it as a transformation. Um, it takes your old grid and it turns it into a new grid. And when you're trying to solve a two by two system, what you're really doing is you're saying, you're trying to work backwards. You're saying, okay, uh, I have a point in my standard system, like negative, a target point. How do I use my vectors? What, what amount of each vector, of, what, what amount of my new vectors in, from my matrix do I need to get to my target point? And the cool thing is once you start thinking about solving a system like that. Of course, you see a complicated system. It's visually really hard to, like, uh, to, to, to see the answer right away uh, to compute it. But if I give you a matrix and you can see the grid, like you see this purple grid overlay the standard thing, um, you guys can tell me, like right away you saw, after a little bit of thought, you, you realize that, okay, I need, I need negative one green arrows and I need two purple arrows. What if I gave you another point like the orange, a different target point, which would be the orange point right over here. How many green and purple arrows would I need to get to the purple one? How many, how many of each, how many greens and purples do I need to get to the orange point here? What do you guys think? Anybody to get to the orange point from the from the origin? Nice, Hannah, exactly. You would need two two W two green ones and two purples. So what you essentially just did is you solve the system um, 
x minus 2y equals um, uh, negative 2 and 3x plus 2y equals whatever that height would be, which would be 1, 1 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12. So you solve some random system there um, just by uh, looking at where, where the random system is the matrix times xy equals the, the, the standard coordinate of the orange point. And you're saying, okay, well, uh, how many green and purple do I need to get to the orange point? All right, guys, um, that's going to be it for today. Uh, hopefully, you have a, uh, hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. Um, next, to, uh, uh, on Thursday, um, I'm going to discuss a little bit more um, about the determinant and uh, uh, another uh, idea and of, of these of two by two matrices and um, how matrix multiplication corresponds to um, something that you guys studied in geometry, geometric transformations. Uh, so uh, don't worry if, if you felt a little bit lost here, don't worry too much. Uh, uh, if you got some nice perspective on this, that's good. But don't don't stress if you didn't follow this uh, discussion that well. Um, it's not I'm not really going to be uh, uh, asking any specific questions on this discussion. So um, don't don't stress if 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 you were a little bit lost. So this was just a little bit extra to um, introduce some nice ideas for matrices, and just to show you that it's really um, you know as a lot of things in matrices and and systems of equations. Uh, it's awesome that we can actually intuitively uh, see the picture right away, uh, but a computer needs to use matrices to do it. All right, guys, that, that's it for me. Uh, I'll see you guys on Thursday. Hope you have a great day. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. You too.